up losing my business because of that. Like if he wasn't already in business, do you help people with that? Like yes, $450,000 already unsecured when I met him. 800 credit score, but he wanted to do real estate. Yeah, I'm working. If I die tomorrow, what I'm gonna have to leave my kids? You have ways to fix your credit. Correct. So there's no excuse. I really didn't want nobody to tell me what to do. It, it felt, I did construction work. I, maybe I got hungry at 11. You telling me I gotta eat at 12? No, nah, I'm good on that. I'm good on that. <laughs> if they show their bank statements, they actually deposit money in, in their account, not in Cash App, Venmo. Get it off the ground, get it out the mud. A lot of people would give their last for their business. Real estate lines of credit are a little different. different. So it's not a, just about getting funding, it's about how to run a successful business because y'all doing it. So I've been checking you out, right? So what's your beef when it comes to no doc loans? Look, man, I'm throwing rocks at no docs. You know, people mm -hmm. keep talking about no docs and really as a business, you getting the smallest amount of money that the bank will give you because you looking real unorganized. But I'm picking them up. I'm picking up all the rocks. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. So, all right. So what, what I'm hearing is, it's like, the allure of $50,000 no doc loan can hinder you from getting what you actually need is like a lower interest rate, higher dollar amount to actually fund to help your company, right? Yeah, okay. because like, think about it. What is $50,000 doing in today's time when it comes to employees, working capital, equipment? I mean, you no, know, inflation is high right now. And to me, a lot of businesses, if they show their bank statements, they actually deposit money in, in their account, not in Cash mm -hmm. App, Venmo. Those are money transfer accounts. Deposit all that money in your bank account. And now you got statements, you got paperwork. Yeah. Okay, so how much money is people missing out on by actually going the other way that you talk about? Well, actually they're missing out on about, you know, cause you can do, up to fifty thousand dollars with no doc, okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. But why not? And then people are going to like five or six different banks, where you can go to one bank. We have banks that will give you up to fifteen million dollars if you have your paperwork and your documents in order. That part. That's what it's about, you know. Like you, you see on the internet, everybody's talking about the regular banks, the Chase, the PNCs. But there's banks out there that has so much money that most people don't even know about. And yeah. they giving out the bag, do you hear me? But if you have your documentation together, you can most definitely get to the bag. And with Marvin, he said, no, I, I, I'm throwing rocks at no, but I'm picking the rocks up because you do have some small businesses out here that, yeah. you know, they're just getting started. Yeah. And we do okay. have banks out here that can fund them, you know, as a startup business or just helping you get your paperwork in order. You know what I'm saying? You got to start mm -hmm. somewhere, you you know, and if you didn't have a coach or a mentor or somebody that can help you and tell you, you know, I remember when I started out as a business owner, yeah. I didn't have a coach or a mentor and I knew mm -hmm. I wanted to be a business owner, but I didn't set my QuickBooks up. I did mm -hmm. not, um, I, you know, I was taking money all different type of ways and I ended up losing my business because of that. But if I would have set everything up the right way, I would have still been in business. <laughs> okay. Oh ho, ho. So before we go down, cause it seems like you went down a path. Can you, I guess, tell us your story? Because I know you just not just picked this up overnight. Can you tell us a little bit about your story and how you started to learn where you can get to the real money versus the little baby money that you talk about? Well, with, with, with us, it started off, I lost my first business. I had a construction business. From okay. the time I was 19, I started my first C corporation. Around 28, 29, the construction economy went down. I ended up losing the business. I broke up with a partner. Everything that could go wrong went wrong. But I was still cool with my banker. And I was like, look, I like to be honest. I said, look, I'm not gonna be able to pay make these payments. I don't know what we gotta do, but I'm not gonna be able to do it. And so anyway, I had a great attorney. He was like, Marvin, don't file bankruptcy. You can work your way out of this. And so long story short, I got with the banker. I said, look, I got other you know friends that are business owners. 
and they want to get money for their business because people would always ask me, well, how did you do this? How did you do that? And so she gave me the bank product book, mm -hmm. which I don't know if a lot of people have looked at it, but the bank has products, lines of credit, loans, credit cards. So I started to read that book. It was like the size of a telephone. We book. got lines. They all have the bank. Their product book have guidelines. guidelines. And you yeah. have to fit within those guidelines. But you didn't tell them that you got fired from you. Marvin had, he has entrepreneur in his blood. Did you hear oh, yeah. him say he started a business at 19? Like yeah, I was self-unemployable. I couldn't get a job. I couldn't <laughs> keep could, a job. He, could, he <laughs> didn't want nobody to tell him what to do. <laughs> so I realized I could help other businesses and mm -hmm. actually that helped me get myself back on track financially. I would charge them to you know, help them get funding because I understood, hey, if you got this credit score, you fit in this product or you can get this product. And slowly but surely, it kind of changed my life where I went from construction to sitting behind a computer. Yeah. Okay, all right, hold on. Before, before we continue, I gotta go back to the unemployable mindset because I, I, I want to talk about it because I think people that are listening and watching, they're going to understand how you feel. And I, yeah. I want them to know how you felt or or what your thought process was before you started jumping into to entrepreneurship. So if you're watching this and if you resonate with anything Marvin is saying, like this is your chance to reach out to them. OK, so when you said uh, when, when when I think about business, I think about I can help. 10 to a thousand people and then i'm like okay how much money can i make helping these people and can i help people every year is was your mindset something like that or you just ain't want nobody to tell you what to do i just you know it, it was the latter i really didn't want nobody to tell me what to do it, it felt i did construction work mm -hmm. maybe i got hungry at 11. you telling me i gotta eat at 12. no i'm good on that i'm good <laughs> oh <You know? laughs> You know, and I just I just had an urge in me where, when I, you know, when somebody told me what to do, I knew what to do as far as my job was concerned. But then you get these extra attitudes and you can only take a break at 945, at 12 and at 115 or whatever. And I'm like, man, I'm hot now. OK, I'm outside in 100 degree weather. I want to go to get a drink of water now. And so it just kept happening. And I realized I, I got really good. I graduated high school 17. By 19, I was making as much as the older guys was. And then my mother, uh, she used to work at McGraw Hill. I worked part time in high school and I read a lot. And so literally I knew how to open up a C Corp, get an EIN number back in the 90s. You know what I'm saying? It's like, it's like seriously, I don't want to date myself. I think I just did, but. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you doing gray hairs, did you? No worries. You know, and, and I just never realized what what I did 30 years ago. I'm yeah. still able to help people today, but now I have the mindset, Mike, like what you just said. Now I want to help a thousand people, two thousand people, because I realized, you know, for a, a lack of knowledge, you know, a lot of people don't get to live their dreams. <clears throat> yeah. That's okay. bad. That, that's fact, man. Was that all right? Is that all right? <laughs> uh, that, that, was, no, that was amazing, man. Cause uh yeah, I just I just I gotta let Dave get off because I, I be talking too much. Uh, <laughs> go ahead. But the unknown, unknown, like you were saying earlier about business funding. Mm -hmm. What is how can I say it? <laughs> Excuse me, I'm sorry. What is the correct way? to go about getting funding because a lot of people of course are personally guaranteeing but what does it look like to actually do it the correct way to get in your documentation to go about getting funded well what i would say is the first thing is figure out what type of <laughs> she threw me out. I'm sorry, the, the first way i would say is whatever entity you want to set up first whether that be an llc S Corp, figure that out first by talking to a CPA or bookkeeper. Then I would get an EIN number. So then you can start to separate your business from your personal. Now, okay. I'm not one of these guys that's, uh, that's going to start saying, hey, you don't, you'll never have to use a personal guarantee. No, yes, you will. You will have to use a personal guarantee. And that's where y'all got to come see Mike and Dave to knock them credit bureaus out. And then you can start to fund your business yes. the right way. You know, people think that they they want to believe stuff that, hey, I don't have to do a personal guarantee. No, you do. Let's keep it real. 
you got to have a good credit score <laughs> and you got to build that business credit. And you know, the banks are tightening up the screw. Yeah. You know, like people don't realize that <clears throat> what used to be, you know, traditional banking, mm -hmm. it is most definitely changing because a lot of banks now are saying, okay, we're not going to let you just snatch and grab. You're not going to come and get money from us and not build that relationship and do business with us. A lot of banks are going to pay. You need to be banking with us for 90 days. Hey, mm -hmm. I want to see money going in and out of that bank account. So, you know, the banking world is changing yeah. and it's changing rapidly. Like even with no docs, no docs nowadays is really no, it's, it doesn't mean no docs anymore. They want something. Can yeah. we get your bank account? Low docs. Low, low docs. It's low <laughs> docs now. Can we get, we need to see the bank statements even for you know, merchant capital loans, you know, they want to see your bank statements. They want to see, are you bringing money into this account? And, you know, people better get ready because it's going to go. It's, we're going to that slowly, but surely. Uh, let me hit on that real quick, because I think the change that's coming is going to be crazy. I think a lot yeah, of yeah. people are operating with free, outdated information. Right. I, I, mm -hmm. When I hear stuff on, I guess, Instagram and YouTube a little bit less, it, it sounds like when my mom used to say, why would I bag my own groceries? Right. right. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Right. So, right. okay. So, so what, I, what I'm hearing is you guys more so have an inside track because you have banks, like you have multiple banks that you partner with. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Like now we actually have relationship bankers that we know. And then we're dealing with real situations daily. And like you said, Mike, perfect example. A lot of people are listening to outdated stuff. When banking may change literally every three to six months, oh, but we're in touch with relationship managers where they know we're a part of being YouTubers and we bring in customers to the banker. Because I'm gonna tell y'all, Kanye may have changed the world. He made a commercial with a cell phone and now major corporations want to partner with YouTubers to bring in business. They'd rather give us money than to give it to uh, traditional marketing. Yeah. Hey, look, I've been studying y'all a little bit. And the reason I said that is because I wanted y'all to do it again. Y'all y'all did something where y'all was like, yeah, the, the game changed. It used to be 660, now it's 680. Oh, and y'all yeah, said it at the yeah, same yeah. time. Yeah, see, I be watching y'all, you know what I'm saying? Gotcha, gotcha, yeah. gotcha. <laughs> yeah, did. Like, we literally had a lender call last week and mm -hmm. he said, Marvin, look, it was 660 last week, but now it's 680. And it's really going to go to 720. Yeah. So people better get ready because a lot of banks are saying, hey, I'll give you the bag, but you need to have at least a 720 credit score. So they're looking at the top tier. They yeah. don't want the bottom anymore or you just you just making it over the line. You got to be above the line now. And that's why we created our mentorship so yeah. that we can bring people in and guide them from the beginning yes. to get organized. We just had one of our students who, for, we didn't check him, but now we were checking for this. He forgot to pay the Secretary of State fees and then he let his corporation dissolve. Guess what? Automatic denial. I mean, it's oh. little bitty things like that that'll cost can you, you 50 can you, hit, can you hit on some of those mistakes that people are making? You know, there's a few mistakes that people are making that is not allowing them to get the bag. Okay. Well, yeah. one thing, Secretary of State. The okay. second thing is fraud alert. Yeah. How do you not take, you know, you have a fraud alert on your credit. Come yeah. on now, you should be checking your credit before you even go to the bank and apply. Yeah. And then, you know, another thing is just being disorganized. Yes. You know, like if you got money going to Cash App and Venmo, and then you forget to deposit in your bank account, look how much income is not showing up. They don't consider, banks don't consider Venmo, Cash App, and PayPal bank a form accounts. Of, a form of payment. They those are money. Yeah, those are money transfer accounts. Even if you use those, I'm not saying don't use them, but transfer the money at the end in your bank account. Because okay. bank statements, taxes, profit and loss. I mean, let's face it. If we business owners, we we gotta we gotta act like it. Yeah, okay. And there, and you know, there are so many tools out here to help people now. So. Let me say this there's no excuse yeah there's no excuse for bad credit because you know you have you guys you you know you have ways to fix your credit Correct. so there's no excuse you know there's no excuse for you not being able to run your business properly you know right. we, you have quickbooks 
QuickBooks do your accounting for you. Yeah. QuickBooks is a merchant. Yeah. QuickBooks is an ACH. QuickBooks can send your invoices out for you and you have everything housed under one, you know, you have it all housed in one location. So then guess what? All you have to do is print, all you gotta do is push the button and you can have a PL for your for your uh oh. your business. You know, you know what? Yeah, so QuickBooks offered me a loan. I, I, I didn't even yes. think about it. I was like, yes. I, I guess they, hey, they tracking my numbers better than me, man. I need, we need to yes. be better, bro. Yes, yes. Hey. And, and perfect example, most people are slipping. PayPal offers a loan. You know, all of these, you know, financial products, you can literally get a loan. So why not, as a business owner, get organized? But what we do in our mentorship is help people, you know, we hold them accountable to be totally yeah. You know, 100 with it. Accountability is huge as a business owner because sometimes we get so caught up in the service or the product and we forget about being the CEO. Yes. Uh, yeah, that is true. Uh, Kate, okay, so we talked about a lot of money stuff. <laughs> We, we talked about a lot of money stuff. Can we talk about different business, I guess, entities that I guess came through your mentorship that, um, well, they didn't know that they were a perfect candidate for your, your program. So hypothetically, a truck driver, like mm -hmm. they over the road and now they, you, they listen to you guys and actually use that QuickBooks and now they're looking sweet on paper instead of doing everything cash. Yeah. Or, right, right. Say to a bank. Yeah, I mean, we, we deal with a lot of cash business. I just talked to a tattoo artist uh, yesterday. And you know, certain businesses, barbershops, tattoo artists, truck drivers, those are considered high risk businesses. So I barber was talking shop? to huh? barbershop. Even a barbershop. That's crazy. Yeah, yeah know, it's so you know, people coming in all the time. That's crazy. And it's not that they don't yeah. make any money. I think the bank looks at it that they're not tracking all of their income. They don't. Okay. You know, because it could be cash, it could be Venmo, it could yeah. be, you know, all these yeah. different money transfer accounts. But if you document all of this, now you bring the risk down because now the bank understands, hey, you do bring in X amount of dollars a month. Or I even threw another spin on it. So I asked the barber or the tattoo artist, I said, don't you have interns or new barbers or new tattoo artists that you teach? I said, now we may have an educational arm of this business. And, you know, really tattoo artists do have interns. So now you may do a, a webinar or do a challenge where you're helping, um, you know, the younger people come up and learn your art. And so now it may not necessarily be a trucking company. It could be a truck educational company or a oh. tattoo educational company. Yeah. Go ahead, Dave, because I got I got a, I got a question. Well, go ahead. Your, 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 your oh, question. OK, OK. So I heard you say something and it, it kind of it, it, it shifted the way I thought because I didn't learn about webinars and all this other stuff until like recently. Right. So me and Dave, when we were doing credit repair, we couldn't get no bank account. They hated it. Yeah. And then we told them we were teaching on YouTube and doing these other like trainings and stuff. And they like completely changed their mindset about our business. Now, That's if a business owner comes to you, can you show them how to do something like that? Yeah. Exactly. And that's part of our mentorship. If yeah. we get a high risk business, we show them how to mitigate that risk to the bank by showing them, hey, not only that may be a part of our income, but a bigger part of it could be from a webinar or a challenge. And as you guys know, you do you know webinars and challenges. You bring in a lot more income actually through the educational than sometimes you do the service. You know, so yes, we're showing businesses how to actually, one, we don't want to get people in debt and they can't pay it off. So we're not just right. talking about loans and lines of credit. We're also talking about making income, yes. you know, to be able to pay that debt back. We don't want people Definitely. going to grab the bag and fumbling it. Right. We got to show you how to make money. <laughs> Take that money to make money. Oh, man, that's amazing. Yeah, I'm okay. up to the mental So show. I was listening to one of your previous and you talked about having a business plan how important is that to a bank to an underwriter well i give you a short story i even me myself i was doing mm -hmm. stated under 50 when i first started in business learning about loans and then i got a mentor and my mentor showed me i wanted to be in real estate and he said marvin you know let your documentation dominate the conversation he Ooh. said walk <laughs> Walk out again. You gotta say that again. <laughs> that gonna be at the beginning. 
that, you know, my mentor, my mentor told me to let my documentation dominate the conversation, which means don't go into a banker trying to explain your business when they may not even understand it. When you sit down, you can articulate better with a business plan. So part of our, one of our mentorships, we give our mentees a free business plan and walk them through it. After I finished this business plan, now it took me a little time, but that was the first time I got approved for $250,000 in one walk. From six banks. Yeah, then hold up, you, you went too fast. Ooh, ooh, went too fast. Ooh. I didn't stop at one bank. I went to 12. I got denied by six, approved by six. So that means I was able to acquire $1.2 million and they pulled my credit at the very end. Cause guess what? I had my credit report in there. I had my 1003, my profit and loss, my two years taxes, my two months bank savings. They, they didn't really have to ask me no question. Then I'm gonna tell y'all a little, a little smooth nugget right here for everybody. I put six of 12 at the bottom. So I had the banker off. He was like, oh, you got, you got 12 of these and I'm number six. We don't realize we can make them compete for our business. Most definitely. We go in there praying, oh, Lordy, can I, can I get the loan? <laughs> and sometimes, you know, you got to make, you got to make them compete for your business. Yeah. Cause you're the prize. Surprise, surprise, surprise. Hey, y'all crazy, man. That is, <laughs> that is, that's wild. Cause I never thought, like, even though I see all these banks on the corner, I just um, assume like everybody was rolling in dough. But now that I think about it, um, a lot of these people have to give out this money because they got quotas as well. So that's six out of 12, I'm like, hey. You try to you try to make your quota or no? Yeah. Right, what's up? Yeah, yeah, and you know, like real talk. When I when I did it for the first time, I saw banking differently. Yeah. You know, the first banker that approved me for two fifty, he called me. He said, "Mr. Smith." It became it went from Marvin to Mr. Smith, <laughs> and then I was young, man. I was a lot younger, and he goes, "We want to make you an offer." So I'm listening to the words he's telling me. They're offering me something, so that means I can accept or decline. Think about the way most of people think. They're, you looking for the approval, but I'm over here, I can judge the approval because I'm a worthy borrower. I had over a 700 credit score. I got the financials. What, what are we doing now? What are we doing? Could you could you have negotiated for a high, if you knew what you knew, could you have negotiated? For a lower interest rate. I did that before. I've and, done that. And people don't know right now today, you can negotiate a lower interest rate on your credit card. Yes. Like I called Navy up and was like, I, uh, can you give me a lower interest rate? Okay, just one moment, Miss Smith. Came back, lowered my interest rate. Yeah. Wow. And so well, I, I, I knew I knew for the military, cause you know we was in the military that hey, they couldn't charge us over a specific, but I didn't know for other people that they can change up the interest rate or negotiate a smaller that's crazy like think about it you're a prime borrower when you have over a 720 credit score i mean you like in the top what two or three percent in america and now you got to act like it you got to own that and then when you a business owner you got to realize you just like coke you just like mcdonald's but sometimes we gotta we gotta change our thinking and that's what we help people do in our mentorship. We help them remember they're, they're a company. Like, even though you're an individual, you may have, you know, got it out the mud. You started very low, but now you got to realize you're a company just like any other company, but you have to own that. Have you got to pop act your like collar. That. You got to pop your collar. We show you how to pop your collar. <laughs> there you go. Let me, let me sit up straight. You know what I'm saying? Like, I was leaning a little bit. <laughs> okay uh so so can you give me um one of your recent i guess success studies from your uh mentorship because i i know in your mentorship like you're answering questions that you think like everybody should know but correct the stuff that you telling us right now i'm like dang what book did that come out of but that's right that's life, <laughs> that's yeah, life we, right yeah we just had one of our mentees this morning uh, mm -hmm. He had to drive from Murfreesboro, Murfreesboro, Tennessee to Memphis, Tennessee, but he was able to walk away with a no doc, which I'm okay with that, but it was no doc, $44,000 for his business. I met him on TikTok on a live. He DM'd me, hey. yeah, he DM'd me, jumped in our mentorship, 
This mm -hmm. is probably, probably took about a week or two, but he was able to acquire 44,000. Now we got two more banks to go to. And I mean, that's a recent success story. He was super happy. Uh, we put him in a mentorship and, and, and he's excited. And he's so happy. We was on our, we, we do a call with our mentees and mm -hmm. uh, just talk to them. We do a group call and we talk and everybody share, you know, yeah. information. That's what's powerful. When yeah. you can have a group of people and they all share information. And this guy was so excited. He was like, wow, this really opened my eyes. So that's what it's about that's a great feeling for marvin and i to yeah. make you you know to help people success it's a disadvantage for us to have all the knowledge that we have and we don't share it. exactly so go ahead Dave. now i was gonna ask what is the highest somebody got you know already know me i like to <laughs> like highest somebody got based off of I guess one that had, I guess, no doc, and then one that had documentation that you helped them out, and they got approved for the bag bag. Well, I'm I'm a, I'm shocked okay. at this. Nah, it was more than that. Like the the, uh, the oh, lawyer, I'm we had a lawyer. Of Marvin, I'm sorry. Yeah, we had a lawyer out of Michigan, and he had a he's a, a real estate attorney. He has four hundred and fifty thousand dollars already unsecured when I met him, eight hundred credit score, but he wanted to do real estate, and so. He was explaining to me how he was currently doing real estate. He ended up was using his lines of credit to pay cash for the house, repairs, all of that. And it was, you know, once that goes from 0% to 20%, he was getting killed by interest. Yeah. I When he jumped in our mentoring, I sent him over the business plan for real estate. Because of course, I still have my 15 year old business plan. He could not believe it. He was able to get approved for $3 million. And that's a line of credit. That's a line of credit that you can't, you can't spend it, but now you got the bank that part of Yeah. <laughs> a lot of, like, you, you know, you could just use that kind of when you want. Three million. No, no, no. Real estate lines of credit are a little different. Oh, okay. They're a little different. It's okay. basically okay. like you partner with the bank and the okay. bank handles the line of credit. But imagine it's still you got access to it. And that that's just one bank. So he can he, he has yeah. Mike catch on. Mike catch on quick. <laughs> hey. Hey. hey, Marvin said, when you get in the members mentorship, I'm gonna right. show you six banks. Hey, <laughs> hey, look, and that's only if you get the nine, because I'm taking you to twelve. Yes, that's it. <laughs> and it's like, you know, that's where you gotta have this this switch that goes on in your mind. Like, think about Apple, Google, and Tesla. Every time we buy their stock, what are they what are they doing? They're raising money. So why shouldn't we have that mentality as business owners where we raise money every three to six months? Why are we not looking for money? Most business owners, they raise money one time for some reason, yes. and then they just stop. And they don't raise enough. You, When they come into our program, they be like, oh, Gloria and Marvin, I need, I need 15,000. Okay, no, if you need 15,000, we're gonna get you 50 or 100,000. Exactly. You know, you don't need 15,000. You need three times, four times that amount. I mean, look look at COVID. When, when the world shut down, the SBA was overwhelmed because what? We had restaurants that couldn't have people come in. We had stadiums that was where, where people couldn't come in. So now everybody was looking for money. Why don't we learn from that and we continue continually look for money as business owners? That's how we made it. We have a restaurant. Yeah. We have a restaurant Ooh. and we make it. Yeah, that makes so much sense. I guess, you know why? How we've been trained, how we've been taught that, hey, you don't need all that money. You need to get it off the ground, get it out the mud. Yeah. But we never been taught to a hey, every three to six months, you should be looking to get a little bit of extra capital. You might not need it or you don't have to use it, but you should actually acquire it just in case when it's time you can leverage it. But I would rather it. have it and not need it than need it and not, and have, not it. have it. I was going to ask that same question about your restaurant. Where your restaurant at, by the way? It's in quick, Atlanta. Quick plug. All right. Yeah, there you go. What's the name of it? What's the name of it? Cafe Social House. Cafe Social House. So, yeah. okay, when y'all got the, I guess, the loan to help y'all with the, with, with the restaurant, um, I think most people stop looking at the SBA after they get their initial loan. Did y'all, did y'all use the SBA even after this? Well, initially we didn't use the SBA to uh -huh. get the restaurant. Mm -hmm. I we okay. raised all the capital um, 
not even using it as VA. Like, you know, Navy gave us yeah. money. Yeah. Um, PNC gave, we, you know, we raised the money for the restaurant. It was so easy. It was just like, and it was a startup. So right. it was like easy. I was able to get the money just like this. Yeah. Cause you know, I, I came from, I came from corporate America. I decided one day that I wanted to, I'm like, dang, I'm building somebody else's dream. I have two kids over here. I'm working. If I die tomorrow, what am I going to have to leave my kids? You know, like, yeah. uh, they go get the insurance policy. And I'm over here building their legacy and their name is just growing and growing and growing. So that's when I decided that I wanted to be an entrepreneur. So I stepped out on faith, opened my first restaurant, failed. Opened my second restaurant, failed. Opened my third restaurant, very successful. Yeah. Until they sold the building, and, and then that's when we met. We met, yeah. and I I end up opening up another restaurant, and our restaurant is very successful thanks to my husband helping me too. <laughs> <laughs> so it was just like we all raised right. all the capital to open this restaurant, and it was you know because Marvin was like, no, we're not taking our money. You don't do that. You can't go take your money and, nah. and throw it into because that's what a lot of people do, and I did that. I put yeah. all my four one k out. When I opened the first restaurant, it was like, oh, this is my dream. Yeah. You know, this is my, it's okay to dream, but you have to plan properly. And that's where a lot of people go wrong because they want this so bad. They're going to take all they folk. No, why am I going to use my money? I'm going to use somebody else's money. And, and like Dave asked me, what was one of the biggest mistakes? I want to throw this in there. A lot of people would give their last for their business. And that's where you should be worried about keeping your personal separate from your business. If your business fails, hey man, let it go. Exactly. Just let it go. Do not go take your 401k, your life savings, and pour gasoline onto a fire. Now you you depleted everything. And when you lose, you lose everything. Because I was one of those people. I lost my house, my car. I lost everything because I kept telling myself, this business is a cash business, so I make money every day. I'll pay that later. More money coming in. I got to keep this going so more money can come in. That is not the right mindset. I'm yeah. telling you, it's yeah. not the right mindset. So I lost everything, taking it all, dumping it back into the business and not paying my personal bills. So does your mentorship, because who you just said a lot, does your mentorship <laughs> help plan? Like if you wasn't already in business, do you help people with that? Like coming up with the I, already, I know you already said business plan but coming up with the plan the execution walking yes. them through and then making yes. the correct choices of how to manage everything yes, yes. we even okay. got a new lender that will actually help you set up your LLC and your bank account a lender yes. but we can't give y'all that name yet it's hot off the press <laughs> but <laughs> we helped them through the beginning stages you know EIN number business plan that's a part of it because we feel like the business plan is so important because now you know your direction yep oh man so what I'm, what I'm hearing is um the reason why you created your mentorship is because uh Marvin you got a bunch of stories and testimonials Gloria you got a bunch of stories and testimonials all the L's y'all took and all the information y'all gathered, just just y'all two. And I know, I know these people that's in your mentorship is going through things, and you guys are talking. So you can pretty much round about any business, come up with a plan, and give them a plan of action. So it's not a, just about getting funding; it's about how to run a successful business because y'all doing it. Exactly, exactly. You yeah. you said a mouthful. That's you know, crazy. because people focus on either raising money or either raising the business. We try to get them the full picture of their business. You know, is your QuickBooks in order? You know, is your marketing? Like we really focus a lot on marketing because it's not just about going in debt. It's, it's being able to pay that debt off. So let's bring in some more business. I, I told a student today, I need you to do a live every day at nine o'clock, Monday through Friday. Ooh. Tell me what that does to your bottom line. We're going to end right there. Okay. <laughs> hey. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We, 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 we gonna need a part two of how to run a yes, successful sir. business with the funding that you get. <laughs> <laughs>